Here we have two x-rays. One is a top view of a pinky finger, and you see it here, and then the ring finger and middle finger. And you have a side view of the pinky finger right here. See the outline of the skin here? And we're looking at a broken bone. This is the proximal phalanx, broken right in half. And you can see it on this side too. You see the fingertip and the shadow of the fingernail here. So what I'm going to do is trace the fracture so you can see that better. So there's the proximal piece. The proximal is closest to the wrist, which is down here. And there's the fracture outlined on the top view. Now we'll go over here to the side view and trace that fracture and show you where it is. There's the proximal piece and then the distal piece. You can see that those bone pieces overlap. So now that I've traced the fracture pieces, you can see where the fracture is now. This dark space here is the space between the pieces. On an x-ray, the bone is white, and then the air, or the soft tissue, is darker. So you see this dark gray between the pieces, whereas here it's a nice continuous line of white bone, and here the line is broken by the fracture. So you can imagine that if I was in surgery and trying to straighten the bone, I would grab this part of the finger and move it this way to the right, and that would straighten it. And I would also take this piece and move it down this way, and that would straighten it. So now let's take a look at what the pins look like once they're in the bone. These x-rays show what the finger bones look like about five weeks after the pinning surgery. So as you can see, the previously broken bone displaced fracture has been straightened. So it's as straight as these are, these unbroken bones. And you can see the white lines. These are stainless steel pins that have been put across the fracture site. You can see this pin is slightly larger than this one. Sometimes we use thicker pins or thinner pins, depending on what we need. And you can see that here, the end of this pin is cut pretty straight, and it's kind of blunt on the tip, whereas on this other side, the other end of the pin, it's sharp. So this is the end that goes through the skin and through the bone and then stops here. So when I put the pin in, I don't want to put it, put it past this dark line. This is the joint. So if I put it past this line, then the joint would not work, would not bend, or it would scrape the cartilage. So that pin has to stop before it hits the joint. You can see on this side view, everything is the same. You've got your thick pin here and the thinner pin here. And then you can see the point of the pin right here, and it's really close to the joint here. So in the surgery, what I'll do is I'll bend this bone down to make sure that there's no scraping and that I can't feel the pin rubbing on the inside of the joint. You can also still see some of the fracture left over here. This break in the line shows the fracture in a similar way you see it right here. But you also see this lighter gray here, and that's new bone healing. So it's called callus. So that new bone is healing right there, and you can see some of it right there. So we know that it's doing well. So this would be a good time to pull the pins out. So here's a before and after x-ray of the broken bone with the angle to the bone. And here's an after picture showing the straight bone and the pins in place. Similarly, here is a before and after x-ray of the side view of the broken bone, and then a side view 
with the pins inside the bone and the bone has been straightened. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on the next video.